Hi everyone, welcome back to The Range. My name is Deacon. Today we have some tourniquets for testing. I'll let my dad pull you in with all those great juicy details. As Deacon alluded to, today we're going to test out some tourniquets. This actually started a year ago. I do believe Focus Trip and a couple other people were talking about the various different tourniquets that were available online and how inexpensive some of them were and whether or not you could trust your life to a clone of say our North American Rescue Cat Gen 7 tourniquet or whether or not you should just man up and spend the $30 or whatever they are at the time to buy the original OEM genuine 100% guaranteed to work model or not. So at the time I reached out to Tacticon Armament and asked if they would send me a set of their tourniquets to test out. I didn't give them any qualifications on what I was going to do. I just said, hey, can you send me three of these because I want to mess around with them. I went on Amazon and bought three of the knockoff brand ones as well as purchasing three genuine North American Rescue Cat Gen 7 tourniquet. Up front, I am not a medical professional and this is not medical advice. This is for entertainment purposes only. So I wanted to think of a way to test the quality of these materials. Again, this is a small sample size of nine and my results could be completely different than if you bought some of your own. So what I did is I took three of these. We've labeled them A, B, and C. I'm not telling you which ones are which until the end, but I know. And we left three of those in my house, you know, temperature control for the last year. But the other six, we took down to the bottom pistol range and we left them just right out on the table like we did with our body armor test that we set out for three years. So that has, so six of these have been exposed to rain, lots and lots of sun, freezing temperatures, hot temperatures. I don't know if a bird pooped on them at some point or another. And so they've just been sitting out on the table for a year. So what we're going to do is we're going to take these tourniquets and our buddy Larry the log right here, we're going to apply our tourniquet to him and see if we will break the windlass or any other part of the tourniquet while we're doing this. So from a thousand foot view, these pretty much all look very much identical. We've got our red tab on them. We've got the little time Velcro right here. The windlass looks the same, but one point that I would like to make is that if you were buying any of these to save money for training, one of these is actually wound in a different manner than the other two. So if you have a holder like this one I got here from Holster Co. If you're looking for a tourniquet holder, definitely check them out. They are a good source of Kydex materials. This B one might not fit in your holder there, but otherwise they pretty much look identical. So without further ado, we're going to see if we can stop the bleeding on Larry the log. We're just going to wrap these around him and we're going to tighten this as hard as we can to see if we can break them. So we'll start with the one Mark C1 that has been in our house. That's about as tight as I can get that. That is tight around here. He is stopped bleeding. This is our tourniquet marked A that's been inside, so we'll have Deacon apply that to Mr. Larry here. But it did not break, but it's pretty sad looking. Or here is our tourniquet marked B. As I mentioned, this one is wrapped a little bit different than the other ones. So it kind of looks like this one. That one is uh, bent like the other one, but we didn't break it. Here's our outdoor marked C2. You can go ahead and stop Larry from bleeding. Well, so far that windless on that one that's been sitting outside for years held. I probably should put my safety glasses on if I break these things and they fly and hit me in the face. There's C3, so that is the third of that particular brand tourniquet. You can go ahead and see if we can stop the bleed on Larry the Log. Well, so far we haven't broken any particular component of this C brand tourniquet. From what I can tell so far from our C brand tourniquet, this one allows us the ability to continue to wind this windlass as tight as possible to the point of almost breaking it versus the other two so far where it physically seems to stop 
and you can't tighten it anymore. This one seems to be able to get it a little more tight than the other two. So now we're on to A2. Again, this sample has been outside for a year. Looks like so far, initially, I see some glue failure on A2. Our windlass is deformed quite a bit, but it hasn't snapped. One point that could be a concern are the little ears that hold the windlass in place, although it seems to be holding. Here is A3. There is A3. Our windlass <laughs> is now the letter Z, but it's still holding. Like I said, I think these ears may be an area of concern, but they haven't broken <laughs> yet. Now we're on to B2. Go ahead, Deacon. Looks the worst for wear. This one looks a little too maybe flexible, and we've bent it quite a bit, and I actually don't think I can tighten it any tighter. So if that, if Larry was bleeding out and you needed to tighten this one tighter, you're probably going to need another tourniquet at that point because this windlass is pretty much trashed. Now we're on to B3, our final sample from being left outside. Go ahead, Deacon. Let's see if we can stop the bleed. B3's windlass, it hasn't broken, but it's become so flexible that we can't get it to actually, here we go. I mean, if we obviously went the other way with it, but it's become the point to where you gotta have it tight, obviously. And for whatever reason, it is, that's about as tight as it's gonna get. Interesting. Well, I think we have kind of a clear winner here. Let's uh, wrap this one up. Well, I'm not quite sure if these results are a surprise to anyone. I wasn't sure whether or not a year would have any effect on the components and materials of these tourniquets. And I think we do have a clear cut winner here and that is our C marked tourniquet. And if you paid attention to any of the close-ups, I didn't realize that the windlass is actually branded on these or the buckles. And our C marked is from North American Rescue or our Combat Action Tourniquet Gen 7. I would say that is a clear cut winner here. The one marked A is from Tacticon and I felt that that did almost equally as well as the North American Rescue one. We did start to bend that windlass a little bit when we really tightened it down, but it seemed to hold its shape. Now the Amazon marked one, that is the one that actually physically was bending and pretty much malforming itself the more that we tightened that windlass on there, but we still were able to get that in there. I did note that the ears wanted to walk apart a little bit as we were trying to put that windlass in there. And again, that could be because we are tightening it beyond its design specifications because Larry the Log is a solid log and not squishy material and blood vessels and muscle. So back to that question that I put in the thumbnail of this video, is your life worth that extra few dollars that you would save buying these lesser known brand tourniquets? Only you can decide. I'm never here to push your opinion either way. I'm just here for information. But after just this simple basic test and me testing out how these tourniquet works, I am myself am going to spend that extra 10 to 15 to 20 dollars buying the North American Rescue Cat Gen 7 tourniquet over these other ones. But if you were in a training scenario and you had a class that you wanted to purchase a bunch of tourniquets for that you were going to pretty much throw away at the end of that training session, I feel up front the Tacticon Armament or even the Amazon ones will do their jobs. Mind you, if you have them you know, stored a specific way, wound a specific way, you're gonna to wanna to check the other brands that you're buying to make sure they're set up the same way because the ones from Amazon, actually you had to open up and then loop them in the belt buckle there to get them set up. So that's something to be mindful of. So with all that being said, it's time for us to get the heck out of here by the end of all of our videos. I take a moment to thank all those who helped make these possible because there's a lot that goes into them. 
Number one is my family. Amy's back there running the camera and was reading her book. And a big thank you to Deacon for helping me out make this video and actually giving me the idea to make this video because he's really big into reading about safety and checking all the cool safety stuff. So he kind of posed this question a little while ago is why should I spend the $30 on the cat tourniquet versus some of the ones that he was finding on Amazon? And I hope I answered that question for him. He would like to remind you all to like and subscribe these videos to get that a lot of the real a logarithm working for us and not against us number two are my patreon and youtube channel members i have a campsite in the description below it's a landing page with different affiliate links or discount codes in there that effectively earn me a sales commission and what i do with that is i put it right back in the channel every one of these cat tourniquets was thirty dollars the ones from amazon i think were 20 or 30 for the pair of three so all that money has to come from somewhere so any of that that i earn i put right back in the channel number three is holster co if you all are looking for any kydex whether for pistols and or for your tourniquets they have a website so definitely check them out number four is tacticon armament again full transparency sent us those tourniquets to test with no strings attached and of course number five is you all for watching until next time we'll catch you at the range